What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Gloss Garage where we make detailing simple. My name is Sock and today I have something special for you guys. So first off, happy holidays. I will be releasing this video either, you know, before uh, Thanksgiving or on Thanksgiving, but pretty much definitely before Black Friday because I feel like this is very important, especially this video is going to be towards the DIYer and the enthusiast or the weekend warrior, just because of the simple fact a lot of the Facebook groups have been you know, uh, in the Facebook groups, is a pad washer worth it? Or even, even my subscribers in, in the comment section have been asking, is a pad washer worth it? Or how many pads do I use to go ahead and polish the vehicle? And I always give them the answer. I just use one pad to clean the entire vehicle, to polish the entire vehicle. And they're like, is a pad washer worth it? And I always go on a huge typing frenzy of, yes, this is worth it because blah, 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 blah. And I'll get into the details why I say everyone should get a pad washer, even especially if you're an enthusiast that only polish two to three times a year, and that's it. It's still going to make polishing much more enjoyable. Ivan and Nick, you know, are a proponent on the DIY detail channel of you do not need a 15 miller, uh, millimeter polisher or a 21 millimeter polisher or um, a pad washer. But if you look at most of the videos, they definitely always use a pad washer because it's much more efficient, but at the same time, it's much more enjoyable that way. But I'm gonna tell you a quick reason why I suggest that everyone gets a pad washer. I am not affiliated with Lake Country. This is what the pad washer looks like. So I wanna get that out of the way as well. Pretty much just to give you guys a quick rundown in 30 seconds what a pad washer is, is you have a reservoir in here. It's pretty much two buckets but the blue bucket is a reservoir of where all the dirty solution goes in after you clean your buckets. And on the black bucket, that's where you put your water and your pad cleaning solution, whether it be snappy clean or rinse and wash. I prefer a rinse and wash, any rinse and wash you want, but uh, surfactant base with no protection whatsoever. Pretty much DIY detail rinse and wash, eco wash, um, you can use Absolute if you want, but uh, like I said, surfactant base is better, not really polymer base to go ahead and deep clean your pads or McKees at 914. Those are the ones I really suggest to go ahead and clean your polishing pads. Now, to go ahead and clean your polish pads, you have these small little grooves and just there's just a <laughs> pump that pumps up fresh clean water every time you pump. You agitate onto the grooves and you dry, damp it. I will do a demonstration a little bit later in the video, but that's pretty much it. Now, like I said, you don't need one, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you the cons of not having a pad washer and what other companies tell you to do as well. And let's go ahead with con number one. If you are using it the way Ivan and Nick tells you guys how to use it, which is absolutely 110% okay in fact, and it is doable, but it's not enjoyable, is this. After every section pass, or ideally after every panel, if you're polishing, you really want to go ahead and clean your pad. It's gonna get gunked up with clear coat, it's gonna get gunked up with polish, and the cleaner the pad, the better results, and the quicker you're gonna go ahead and finish, um, finish your panels, and also the better results, meaning the deeper gloss and the deeper shine that you want. So what, what Ivan and Nick does is they go ahead and have to remove the pad off of the backing plate, as you see, I'm constantly ripping off through the Velcro every single time you're doing a section pass. And in their video, they go ahead and have a rinseless bucket, which you're gonna have a rinseless bucket on your side and you're gonna go ahead and dump it all the way, rub it onto the grit guard, clean it out a little bit on your hands, squeeze it out, put it back on your pad, and then you're gonna spin dry and then go ahead. And if you only have one pad, doing that about 20 to 30 times it's not fun whatsoever. Now that's call number one. Call number two is you're wearing down your backing plate Velcro and also the hook and loop and Velcro of your actual polishing pad. Because the more you bend it and the more you squeeze it, it's going to, to not, you know, it's, it's going to get worn out a lot quicker. So that's call number two. And of course, like I said, you're just gonna be taking a lot more time to go ahead and clean and wash your pads. So what do most companies tell you guys to do? Other companies, I'm not going to name them, but most companies will go ahead and tell you 
if once you do your suction passes and you understand which polishing pad is right for you, you want at least a minimum of six to eight pads to do the entire car. Six to eight pads. So if you buy a quality polishing pad, they're gonna cost you anywhere between 10 to $15. So now that you've dialed in of which pad is right for you for that moment, they're gonna tell you to use six to eight pads or let's just keep it even, eight to 10 pads. Let's just say, uh, let's just say 10 pads to do everything because the hood and roof are considered pretty much two uh, panels. So you're gonna go ahead and use 10 of the same polishing pads. And if each one costs $12, that's $120 to go ahead and buy, to go ahead and do polishing, uh, just to polish your car. Once you're done polishing your car, you're gonna spend 45 minutes to an hour of cleaning out your pads under the sink or manually, which is not fun. Second, Second thing is that's only for one pad. So if you're gonna go ahead and do a compound step, a polishing step, or maybe, like I said, you're a weekend warrior and you may polish three to four, maybe five vehicles a year, what's gonna happen is you're gonna buy 10 of each, pretty much, or probably five of the finishing pads just because those are for very rare instances of finicky paint. But pretty much you're gonna be on average having about 25 to 30 pads. Now, if you do the math, that's well over $300 if you're paying $12 each. So that's something that I really want you guys to go ahead and think of in the cost of something like a pad washer, which only costs $159. And on top of that, on Black Friday, they typically have about like a 20 to 25% sale on these. And you're only gonna be paying about 130 bucks. And they typically have free shipping. So there it is, you're gonna be paying just 130 bucks for a pad washer and all you really need is one pad of each. And that's definitely going to go ahead and get you done easily, easily. If you wanna buy two, that's it. And you're still way under the $300 mark, or you're probably gonna be a little bit above budget if you use this method, which if you truly don't want a pad washer and you feel that it's going to be useless for you, here's the math as well. So if you're gonna go ahead and do the Duncan method of what Ivan and Nick goes ahead and shows you, I recommend you guys get three to four pads. Why do I say three pads? Or you know what, we're gonna say three pads. Why do I say three pads? Because of the simple fact is, like I said, if you have one pad to keep Duncan and uh, you know ripping it off the backing plate, Duncan inside the rinseless wash and, and cleaning it, it's very annoying if you have one pad. So if you have three, you, go, you can go ahead and do three panels or three sections or, or whatever you need to do until it gets gunked up. You're gonna go ahead and clean all three at the same time, dunk it in, and then put it back on your, uh, put it back on your polisher, damp dry, and then go ahead and continue the rest of your polishing process. But, that's saying if you buy, if you guys buy three. So that means that if you buy three pads of each one, a heavy cut, like say three of the wool pads, three of the polishing pads and three jeweling pads, and each one's about say on average of, of $12, that's nine times that by 12, that's $108 worth in pads. Just so you could be a little bit more efficient and be more in, and have a little bit more, um, fun polishing your vehicle if that makes sense because what's going to happen is it's not fun ripping off the pad every single time and trust me i know that feeling because when i first started my detailing business i only used two to three pads i used to go ahead and clean it out and that's it second reason is when you're dunking it inside your rinseless wash bucket eventually after the first polishing pad or second polishing pad that's all dirty water that's, that's very heavy in oils and polish oils and stuff like that. That's what's inside that bucket. So here you're always getting fresh, clean water. So that's something that I want you guys to keep in mind and why I'm making this video because it is Black Friday and it's the best time to go ahead and get a pad washer. And yeah, so if you have a pad washer, you could buy one of each. Or if you're gonna still do the Ivan and Nick method, you're gonna go ahead and do what? You're gonna spend about $108 to $112, $13, whatever it is, 
instead of paying $130 and going ahead and getting one of each. And you're gonna be $40 over budget, but you're definitely gonna have a lot more fun polishing your paint. So hopefully this goes ahead and sums it up. Also, it will make your pads last longer because you're not constantly ripping off of the backing plate on the hook and loop. Also, they're gonna last a lot longer because at the same time is you're not bending it and squeezing it. They're gonna stay in the same contours and the same shape the entire time. And that's it. This polishing pad that I have here, uh, we've used it over 15 vehicles. And if you're a DIYer and you only polish three to four times a year, guess what? This one pad's gonna last you about five years, uh, about two years. So two to three years. So yeah, so hopefully this answers your question. And um, the reason why I have this out here, you know, uh, if you're working on an oxidized vehicle or something that's oxidized, eventually you're gonna get that oxidation on the, on the polishing pad. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick demonstration. So pretty much what you wanna do is grab any APC that you have, a quality APC, make sure you dilute it properly. You can use Extra Tough, Owner's Pride uh, Clean, DIY Detail All Clean, um, you know, Owner's Pride Grime, you know, any APC of your choice. And some polishes like to really gunk up the, the polishing pad and, and it won't clean with the pad washer and you really gotta be annoying to go ahead and get it off. And same thing, once your pad turns black, it has oxidation and it's not fun, um, you know, visually to have it. You really want your pad to be clean. So this is what I tell people, just grab your APC. Just grab your APC, gotta turn this on. Cause I always close the tip. Do a couple sprays. And then you just go ahead and clean your pad as such. And like I said, this pumps up a lot of water. So you really want to press firm on speed two. I like to go ahead and I don't put pressure. I just agitate it across the grooves. Clean out the pad, lift it up slightly, probably like a quarter of an inch. On speed six, that's it. Have a nice, perfectly damp pad ready to go ahead and do the next section. So yeah, so hopefully this was informative. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this type of video. Do you need a pad washer? I, If you're polishing two to three vehicles a year, I absolutely recommend it. The same way you have a nail gun at home that probably costs about $60 to go ahead and get a nail gun. How often do you use your nail gun at home? Probably once every four or five years. If you're gonna be polishing your paint, I'm pretty sure if you're a DIYer and really enjoy taking care of your vehicle, you're probably gonna po polish your car once a year for sure. So always get that thing looking right for the next season or for the next summer season, just to make that paint pop. So yeah, so it's a great investment. It's a great time to go ahead and buy one. And I'll put the links down below for your pad washer. And that's about it. So hopefully you guys found this helpful, informative, and if, after this video, if you feel that this is not right for you, more power to you. But other than that, hopefully you guys found this helpful. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.